but you know, I thought it's a nice day again, so we'll come back outside uh, in the garden, which I'm currently doing up, and I will do this video. Now, if you watch the blue, uh, the diabetes type two video, there's a trailer at the end, and while I was recording that trailer, I was absolutely fuming, and the reason why is because I went into the doctors and they give me this. Now every time you go to the doctors they give you something like this and you get the header at the top even if it's things like whiplash or whatever you know that that is potentially a new condition and that's exactly what I assumed. Now we're doing this video I was going to include audios and things like that so I'll be, I've literally got all the audios set up which I was going to play for the channel. At this stage though I've decided that we don't really need evidence unlike the diabetes type 2 video the only thing I need to do is just cover it. So. So the first thing is uh, cholesterol, as you heard on the uh, the back end of the trailer. The last thing what the nurse said was, we need to have a chat with you about your cholesterol. Now in my situation, I suffer from a registry cholesterol condition, which was detected when I was 30, and it was detected by having normal blood pressure, but a blood test revealed high cholesterol, and at the time it was about 8.7. So immediately from 30, for the last 28 years, it's a case of what we have to do is take tablets every single day and control it and over time those doses have gone up uh, so prior to doing the plan the first time then my cholesterol was down to 0.7 and the overall reading was about 5.6 which was classed as quite high doing the plan this time and one of the reasons why I'm surprised that she has to give me this leaf up is because my cholesterol is now down to 4.1 now bad cholesterol or as they call it, LDL is now showing at 2.1 with HDL at 2. So the HDL or the good cholesterol, which is very difficult to increase, has actually gone from 0.8 to around 2, which is once again it comes back to rewriting the blood cultures, the blood, you know, etc. So very difficult to achieve, but they planned it. So how it all works is basically. You have LDL, which is your bad cholesterol. So if you have saturated fat, trans fat, etc., the LDL will increase, and this is giving you the chance of your veins become blocked because of the excess fat that you're having. However, if you're having olive oil, grapeseed oil, grapeseed oil, uh, oily fish, <coughs> naturally produced oils, then that goes towards your HDL, which you need for a healthy lifestyle. So that's, you know, I write about this in the book, I'll put the page up, and it's just simply called The Truth About Cholesterol, a lot of people doubt it, and think that things are being a, a little bit silly. Uh, it's not, it's, it is, it's not a myth, it's actually true, uh, like I said, I suffer from it myself, and I've done a lot of research as well into, you know, how to correct it, as you can imagine, because having a ready tree, it's a bit like a ticking time bomb, as I was saying to the nurse the other day, uh, you know, I feel great in myself, but it's always in back in mind, you know, family members have uh, had a very bad time in the past, you always say, uh, my dad's no longer with me, so, due to heart attack, but, you know, so anyway, moving on, so it would seem is that uh, this is now incorporating tri triglycerides into the blood test for cholesterol, now that confuses me because once again, the triglycerides in the past was me a measure for diabetes type 2. It would seem as that this has now changed and is part of the cholesterol side, which I thought was very interesting. But they're not refer interestingly enough, they're not referring it to as triglycerides, they're calling it trigs. So it's checking your trig level. I know it works is basically your LDL or your bad cholesterol, if that is above 1.7, your class is having too many trigs which would then flow up your blood cells, create the fatty deposits, which could lead to heart attack, which is basically what LDL does anyway. So, my question is at that point, you know, you're saying the same thing just in a different way. Why? So, I do what I normally do, is start to research, and I researched this very quickly, I was very annoyed when I did research it. And you have remembered to put the microphone on, yee. So, this is what I used to do in the past round the book for 30 years. So we've been to the doctors, so the best way to do it, fat sheet, pen, paper, form. And what I'm going to do is just literally form them up and see if we can get more information about UCLP. 
Um, and what I found, so if you type in UCLP, which is right at the top of the letter, interestingly enough, you find it actually seems to be named after UCL Partners. Now you, they, they, they're basically based in London, uh, they've been funded by the NHS. If you type, literally just simply type in UCLP, you'll find the page straight away from straight to the top. If you look at the Wikipedia page, it's basically really funded by the NHS. They've invested probably thousands, if not millions, into this project, uh, which was established in 2007, I believe. So now we're 10 years in, and they're looking at various uh, areas of sickness, women's health and heart. Looking through the art page, I couldn't see anything about cholesterol and stuff, but that's a different story. So back on, I also couldn't, I couldn't find that many PDFs. Uh, of uh, what this research had produced, apart from uh, this one. So I really do get the impression at this point in time is that this is a company who's been funded for many, many years by the government and the NHS, and probably somebody's put the foot down and said you have to produce something now, and they've come up with this leaflet, which apparently expands into a bigger document. Uh, but interestingly enough is that it's also connected to Art UK, uh, the nurse did say to me, uh, you do know about UK, and I was like, uh, British Art Foundation, but Art UK, who are they? So once again, if you go out type into Google and type in uh, UCLP Art UK, it comes up with a completely different area, where they're basically saying, right, we have now this UCLP plan, not a disease, not a new name for cholesterol issues, it's a plan, and this plan has been devised so it will increase your good cholesterol which is once again a bit weird because they're saying is that the bad cholesterol is too high so it's the assumption that the good cholesterol goes up or the blood cholesterol comes down or you know are they just trying to concentrate on the bad cholesterol and bring that down but if so what about the good cholesterol like I said if the tablets you have the risk of the tablets of bringing them both down uh, you don't want to do that so but I look a bit unclear, so I think to be fair we'll go for bring your bad cholesterol down under 1.7, which I think is reasonable. Uh, but once again, it's uh, yeah, it's a bit I don't know. It just seems it, it feels like a lot of things have just been thrown together. Right, so try and cut a long story short. Whizzing through the fact sheet, I'll bring it up on the screen. Uh, what it says, step one, get motivated, which is a bit difficult because you don't really know what it's about. Even when I said to the nurse, is this a new plan, she went, you don't do. think so. So anyway, step one, get motivated. If you want to improve your cholesterol levels, well, we don't want to improve the bad cholesterol level. So, that's again poorly written. Uh, basically what it's doing now is just saying is that this is a simple, straight, step-by-step, -step, flexible guide that anybody can do focuses on what sort of food you can have. It's a diet, you know. I mean, they spent 10 years here and they've come up with a diet sheet. Uh, okay. Step by step guide. They actually formed them. Because at this moment in time, it's something close to my heart. It's doing me head and absolutely mentally. Instead of celebrating when you're here, we've had a cure for diabetes type 2, or at least I've cured myself, and the book's being released, it should be party, party, party. Instead of just sat here now, worrying myself to death. So, over cholesterol, uh, something that I've had all my life, inherited, can't do much about it. So what are these people going on about? Uh, it's what I want to know. See what they say. Let's try that again then. Very interesting that you've been to the doctors the day before, give you all this literature, I scourge you to death, and then you don't even pick up the phone. Welcome to Heart UK, the cholesterol charity. Our cholesterol helpline is open Monday to Friday from 10 a.m. till 3 p.m. Our lines can get very busy well, at certain times, so if sorry. we are unable to take your call, please leave a message or request an information pack with your name, address, and telephone number. No, got the information you can pack. also send us an email on ask at heartuk.org. Okay. Thank you for calling. The voice messaging service is not protected in the message. Please start recording your message after the tone. This operation cannot be completed at this time. Please hang up and try again later. And I 
as to why it's a step-by-step -step guide and they said well it's a new diet and people don't like doing it all at once so once again I mean going back to the point which I do you look at week zero in various elements of your life you prepare for it you plan for it and you, you, week zero is a practice so you can bring it all in if you want you can do little bits if you want uh, if you have issues with exercise you can do tiny bits and work your way up for a few weeks before you actually start the plan and if you have problems with eating or you don't think you have problems with eating it gives you a chance to research it and uh, most people have a shock but apparently this is just step by step down so step two essential healthy diet heart healthy diet and it basically was then says things like well apple pie and dairy cream is now 0.1% sat fats uh, difficult for me because if you made it yourself it's probably not uh, there's a lot of fat, sat fat, like saturated fats in the cream uh, apple <coughs> a lot of saturated fat in apple instead try apple uh, crumble with soya milk or soya cream which now reduces it to 4.8 grams of sat fat, uh, saturated fat well spoiler alert my book says is that if you're a woman you only want seven in the day and a man you're trying for ten so you know let's reduce one meal into well it's even breakfast to 4.8 grams of saturated fat well you know based on my plan and it does improve these levels uh, I ain't gonna work it's, it's gonna be way too much uh, chocolate digestives 4.4 sat fat so, so everything's going on to saturated fats Try rich tea biscuits, 0.7 sat fats. Fine, full of sugar, you're going to put weight on. When you put weight on, your cholesterol goes worse. Your diabetes is going to go worse. Uh, but hey, oh, let's have biscuits. It goes on and on and on. And, you know, at least you're five a day. It's just, it's, it, to me, it's just a really, really poorly written thing. Uh, you know, and it, and it just comes across, it's out UK, it's about your cholesterol, it's UCLP at a glance. It, it presents itself as, you know, we're going to scare you uh, on the trailer. You know, you, you type in from Google or you go to an NHS health site, you put in all your stats and say, what are the chances of me having a heart attack? And generally, everybody has a chance of having a heart attack. So if you've got diabetes, like me, diabetes 21 stone, da -da -da -da, probably about 40%. Uh, lose the weight, diabetes goes away, so now I'm currently about 25%. Put everything into the computer, and it still came back with 40% based on this pump, which means that, you know, instantly if I didn't know what I was doing, I'd just simply say, forget it, you know, uh, it's going to be an absolute waste of time. <coughs> and, you know, even saying that, you've got 24 25% chance of heart attack, stroke, heart failure at this moment in time, rather than concentrating on, we've well, lost all this weight, Steve, you've cured diabetes type 2, uh, you know, it, let's look at the negatives, it's just absolutely crazy. Uh, so, let's lower sat fats, saturated fats, completely ignore trans fats, uh, so you're probably okay to have an hot dog, but it doesn't say that either way, absolutely nothing about trans fats. Uh, uh, nuts, once again, I, I questioned this when I was there, uh, not generally I found put weight on also slows down the digestive system uh, many people say we can get goodness out of nuts and you probably can but my point of view is uh, try and escape the nuts put the wrong areas of guided line but only if you have one handful a day which I was having a laugh with the nurse and saying you know you can't do that you buy a packet you eat a packet you know you buy a bottle of wine you have a glass of wine at weekend mm. so why do you buy another bottle in the uh, the following day it's just human nature uh, so, interestingly enough, uh, foods fortified with plants, which I'd have thought would have been extremely healthy, the nurse crossed out. I don't know if you can see that. If I'd have thought that would have been, you know, plant, plant based stuff would have been quite healthy, but apparently that's not that cool. Uh, and also, you know, it, the things where it, where it gets closer to is oat, bran, barley, glucans, which is, you know, oatmeal bread, one slice, or a roll. Uh, crisp bread, and full of popcorn, unsalted, unsweetened. Interestingly enough, in a quick tip, I also say not microwaved, but it doesn't say that on there. Uh, tortilla bread, uh, sorry, one small whole wheat tortilla bread, or pita bread, pita bread. 
a whole meal scald, two to three tablespoons of cooked brown rice or pasta. Okay, so this is just now, instead of lowering your sat levels, this is now just trying to make you feel fuller for longer so you eat less food. Maybe this is the balanced bit, right, so if you have all the all wheel, all meal, all meal stuff, then all the sugar that you've had from the extra biscuits and stuff might catch out or balance out over time. Hopefully you won't put that much weight on. Who knows? So, I came from Panic Panic Panic, which I was on the trailer to discovering this is probably a desperate attempt to the NHS and this UCL partners to produce something using Art UK as the underlying charity to give it credibility. Uh, if it had been British Art Foundation I'd found it far more creditable than Art UK. Well, you know, maybe if you live in London or something Art UK is the number one British Art Foundation isn't. Uh, also things like you know uh, avoid bacon, avoid meats, only have meats once or twice a week. It's, you know, my issue with that is, yes, meats do contain saturated fat. They don't contain any sugar. If you cook them crap properly, you trim the fat off, or you grill them, you lose most of the fat anyway. So why deprive people, right, you can't have bacon, you can't have, you know, your lamb. You also know, uh, can't, I mean, you know, avoid butter but it doesn't say avoid margarine. I'm going to do a video on butter. This is margarine when I get back from holiday. And, you know, margarine contains trans fats. Bit of a spoiler again, uh, where butter is naturally produced. So, you know, trans, once again, trans fat seems to be okay. Uh, it's, 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 after 10 years of research, I'll say this is extremely poor. Uh, if you have heart conditions, cholesterol issues, and you go to the doctors and they give you this, and then they give you the new reading, which is your chance of heart attack is going to be higher as a scare tactic, I would really encourage you to watch this video. Uh, if you've got a friend who's just been given this, please pass him on and watch the video. Uh, I did go back to the doctors. I phoned these people up to ask uh, for a little bit of advice and who there was. The, the result of the phone call was simply, uh, you know, you've gone through your, your saturate, uh, sorry, you've gone through your cholesterol levels at 4.1. You should not have been given this leaflet. Fine. So, with it being hereditary, what do I do? We'll go back to the doctors, go and have a chat with them, see if you can be referred back to a lipid uh, consultant who can review your medication and maybe you can be given injections once every two weeks rather than using your current medication because they're far more modern type medications. So, once again, I was kind of, uh, yeah, okay. So I did run over, I did speak to the doctor who kindly, I saw a locum, who very, very kindly saw me in the afternoon. I explained what had gone on and she looked at the blood results and she immediately said, look, you've been doing your plan, uh, you know, looking at the last six uh, months blood test and beyond, your LDL's been as high as four, generally 3.8, uh, you know, your bad cholesterol, if not higher, now it's down to 2.1 and your good cholesterol is around 2, giving you a 4.1 in total. That is very good, you know, for a person that's hatched, a person that's got hereditary uh, cholesterol conditions. That is absolutely brilliant. It's brilliant if you haven't. So, she, she did say that she'll refer me to the consultant for the lipids. Uh, but basically, I just said, you know, as long as, you know, you, you put my mind at rest, you know, I'm going to continue, I'm going to go over to Bulgaria, I'm going to survive, you know, quite a good number of years, so I'm not going to go and see the, sur at the consultants or the surgeons or whatever. You know, it, it's, it's crazy, crazy, it has. So I just wanted to make this video, it's a quick one, hopefully it's unedited. If people want me to do the extended version, I will do, but I'm hoping this is enough information for people to go off. Uh, I can do the extended ones, which will be, you know, interviews with the nurse, uh, or interviews private recordings with the nurses and doctors and they have got a 30 minute phone call uh, with these people once again I think you know this video is hopefully enough uh, let me know what you think uh, so what am I going to do what am I going to take from this I am actually going to take something from it yes I am even though I think it's a load of rubbish and what I'm going to do is try it, test it. So what I'm going to do is have some oatmeal bread. I've actually been having it over the weekend and Leanne likes it, so that's a plus. Also got some walnuts and I've also got some porridge in. 
and what I'm going to do is start using these when I get back from Bulgaria. I'm actually start using the oatmeal bread now, like I said, I've had a couple of handfuls of walnuts, but I'm just kind of playing with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take those for the next three months-ish, three months minus two weeks, not doing it in Bulgaria. And then I'm going for another blood test. And what we're going to do is have a look to see if the bad cholesterol is lowered by introducing these into the diet on a daily basis. Now, the porridge I'm a bit worried about because I think that that's going to end up with the plan. So I'll probably have that once a week. And then the other things are just on a daily basis or when I want to use them. But when I was there as well, I'm going to then do my version. And my version is very simple. Uh, historically, you have statins which was produced in America and it cost them millions to produce this stuff and basically they said right we can sell this for a small fortune we've had a research grant for it this is the statins this is what we're going to do and that's what they do today and everybody's now on statins and it's the wonderful drug and it's uh you know it stops you ha uh, having heart attack etc etc it clears uh, your veins you know whatever it is that they want to say wonderful i also noticed that during the research of that, uh, they found that there was a residue from the statins, and this was called niacin. Now, a lot of people wondered, well, what does this do? And they tried that side of it, and they found is that this niacin was about at least 50% more powerful against cholesterol, returning cholesterol back to normal levels, and more importantly, raising good cholesterol, which is very, very difficult. I mean, you know, even me doing the, the plan in the book, my cholesterol's gone from 0.8 to 2 in 12 years. So, you know, that's that's a very long time. But it's increased that. So the deal we've got with the nurses, I'll do this now for three months, have a blood test, see what's happened. In the event is that there's no change, um, that would be my suspicion, then it's just going to have a chat with the doctor because what I don't want is because niacin in effect is the same drug as astrofastatin. Uh, I don't I don't want to clash uh, with the cholesterol drugs so she's going to have a chat with the doctor and just basically get permission to take niacin if that's given in three months time then we'll have three months of using niacin on a daily basis and I'm going to get the non-flush because you can get flush and it just burns you up and makes you feel really really hot so we're going to do niacin uh, for three months which you know and then do another blood test and then we can compare the results from UCLP in case you come across it, versus niacin, and that's going to be my absolute final trial. The diabetes type 2 was the last one. Like I said, you know, it's uh, I've been doing trials and working things out and doing research for 30 years. It's, I just can't do it anymore. This is the very, very final one, unless there's something really burning out there. Uh, so that's pretty much what I wanted to say. Uh, thank you very much. I probably had a bit of an outburst on the trail. Uh, yeah. Uh, at the end of the day, everybody has a risk of heart attack, everybody has a, has a risk when you cross over the road. You know, you could get hit by a bus every time you go on the motorway, you're driving at high speed, anything could happen at any time. What I don't like at this moment in time is people coming up with new ideas and then scaremongering people in by saying things like, well, you've got 25%, 50% chance of a heart attack. We've got to realise everybody's probably got, you know, 10, 15% chance of heart failure at any one given point. Uh, in my situation, a relative cholesterol, 49 now to have it at 24% if that's even true it's not a bad reading get rid of a bit more weight that will probably come down to 20% 21% but I can't get rid of irregular cholesterol conditions you know even this even if I got me bad cholesterol right down so separate arguments saying my bad cholesterol was 0.5 and my good cholesterol was 3 and it was 3.5 which is a super low reading as soon as I set, stopped taking astrofastatin or cholesterol drugs, it was zoom up. We, we did it before when we did the 2009-10 plan. Uh, the doctors went, right, well, you lost a lot of weight, you know, you've improved your cholesterol, let's try it without the drugs. And at the time, it was something like 4.7. And within three weeks, we went for another blood test and it went eight. And immediately, the tablets was replaced because, you know, that's when it becomes dangerous over a long period of time. So, so scary mongering at the NHS, I'll call it that. This form again, ignore it. In effect, I'll put a link on where this is, I'll put a link on where UCL Partners is, and I'll put a link on where uh, UK is, so you can have a look yourself. 
If you find anything which I haven't, then email me, let me know. Uh, <coughs> I've got one more video coming up this weekend, which is Rings and Things. And this video is also quoted in the book. It's, it's an interesting way of monitoring how you're doing uh, during your weight control. And also, somebody pulled me up about one of the slides. Two pound line power plant style. Is that the crate went over Christmas and stuff? People were saying, Well, what would it be like if you, you know, you carried on with it? You weren't messing. How good would the line be at that point? So it, so it also shows that. It's only a short video, but you know, that'll probably be released Friday or Saturday. And then it's holiday time, so I'm having a two week break. I want to come back. Uh, we'll probably focus on a, a quick video uh, just to keep the channel running. But then when I come back, it's really, you know, probably all of June, July uh, writing. And then this can be put into a book and proved. So, thank you very much for watching. I hope I haven't annoyed the neighbours next door too much. And the new neighbours as well. Or perhaps they just think I've gone completely star raving mad talking to myself in the back garden. But thank you for watching. If you're on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you're on Facebook, uh, share, like and share. And if you know anybody with diabetes type 2 and they need to watch the last video because it was interesting, especially the, 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 the denial straight away from the NHS. And if you've got anybody who's been given this leaflet or has cholesterol issues, then let them know about this. This is obviously going to be a part one video. There'll be part two, which will be the results of, you know, the diet change. And then part three, which will be the results of medicine. So I'll put this up as part one of three. Uh, but hopefully you find it great. So thank you for watching, I'm Waffling now, I'll see you soon, I'll have a great holiday, and, and enjoy reading.